Hello and welcome to another What The Heck Crab. In fact, we're on episode 7 and oh my god, yes that's right, I finally managed to produce one. I'm so sorry for the delay. As with the last one, this one's just about mods. Almost everything is taken from that little known, you, you know, it's quite small, you've probably never heard of it, website called ModDB. Alright, so since it's been almost two months since the last podcast and we've had an influx of new members thanks to uh, you, the YouTube channel Valve News Network, let me quickly summarise the podcast. What the Head Crab is a podcast that updates listeners on what's been happening in the Gold Source and Source single player modding world. Initially, the podcast used to cover Reddit, YouTube, Game Banana, and in fact some other things, but it quickly became apparent that there was just way too much stuff to cover. So from episode 6, I decided to focus almost exclusively on the mods. If you'd like to know more, then feel free to, you know, check out the What the Head Crab introduction. At some point, I may make some video versions of this. Anyway... Let's get started. Pick of the episode. So every episode, I pick one thing that's kind of the most interesting for me. Um, and this week, it's the Half-Life Update Mod Dev Progress number eight. Uh, the video, which you'll see uh, below in the post, um, is well made and shows exactly what's been updated. It talks about how the, the blood and some effects, and it's looking pretty good. So um, as much as I really would want new maps, Playing Half-Life again with some new features, that's going to be pretty cool. So on to the main events. All right, here we go. So we've got Grey. Now, Grey was originally released in 2007, and it's moved over to the uh, Unreal Engine 4. And I kind of feel cheated, to be honest, because it's kind of still listed as, you know, an Episode 2 mod. But um, I'm sure people who are following uh, this mod will be interested, whether it's on Source or, or not, but but not for me. Uh, this one talks about uh, weapons updates and as you can see some, some some quite pretty screenshots. There we go. Next is Punt, Punt Rebirth. So in this particular update they talk about some new maps that they've been working on and some new puzzles and you can see the screenshots here. There's also uh, some listening to do, like some music. Um, to be honest I'm not really sure why they're not making this in uh, Portal 2, but but then, then there's probably a good reason, but it just seems strange that you're making a game that looks exactly like Portal in, well not exactly, but you know, very similar to Portal in another engine. But anyway, perhaps this is the, uh, this is the answer, rather than the standard source SDK uh, base 2013 single player map format, that's what they're going to use instead. So maybe that uh, instead of using Portal 2 by using that it gives them access to more tools or perhaps a wider readership. Anyway if you're interested in this and it looks kind of fun um, if you're a kind of a Portly fan then give that one a look. Next is Der Schwarznibel which is the Black Fog in German. Now I've recently installed this on my computer and it is 22 gigabytes. Yes let me repeat that in case you were like coughing over your coffee like, <clears throat> like you know what I mean. All right, um, it's 22 gigabytes unpacked, and I had to delete almost everything, almost Windows, to get this on. And I've started to play it, and it's very interesting. Um, it, it seems that the mod's been getting like a lot of confusion, and I, I'm still confused. They're basically saying that they're not trying to recreate the beta; they're just trying to use the feel of the beta to give you some things to play with. Now, I haven't played that much of it. I'm not sure how much there is to play, to be honest. In you, you might think that with 29 gigabytes, there'd be like a year's worth of gaming, but most of it seems to be graphical. And there is a low definition version available. I don't know how big that is. Probably only. In fact, I just said 29. I should have said 23. It's probably only 10 gigabytes. You know, I mean, 10 gigabytes, nothing. Um, and I haven't had many uh, combat situations yet, but it does look very interesting. And I featured it in a previous edition, and I didn't realize, uh, real, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't know what it was when I uh, added it the first time, but now I do. And it, in some places, it looks fantastic, as you can sort of see here. So I'll be adding that to the site soon. This post is telling you that it's not trying to create the original story, no, it's just trying to get the feel for it. But I'm still not, you know, completely unconfused, as it were. All right, next one is Dead Sector. Now, this is a remod. Now, Zeke Shadow has been doing this, and I have to say that I haven't really been following what um, he or she has been doing. Sorry, I don't know if you're a man or woman. Um, but basically, it seems that he's taken some of the older mods that weren't working, he's fixed them, and he's kind of made some other changes as well, maybe made them look a bit prettier or included some extra models. Now, 
as a, as an idea, that sounds like really cool, but I don't know if he's got permission or she's got permission to do that, but I, I do love the idea, and if they have got permission, then that's fantastic, and I'll be trying to get in contact with uh, Zig Shadow. I mean, he, he frequents, he or she, I'm sorry, he or she frequents the site, uh, Run, Think, Shoot, Live, so he has contacted me before, or she's contacted me before. They have contacted me before. Um, and I'll be, you know, looking into this much more. So, Dead Sector was pretty interesting, I remember. Next up is Opposing Force Assault. All right, now, this is completely new for me. Didn't really know what's going on. Let me just tell you, don't click this button. Don't click it. It's a complete waste of time. It's like a couple of things. It's like, -na 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 -na, really annoying music. And it doesn't tell you anything about the mod. It's just supposed to be a trailer, which is fair enough, but it doesn't tell you anything about the mod. It doesn't get me excited. There's a 1.4 version released, but it's called an alpha. Now, if it's an alpha, then it should be less than one, but whatever, I'm just being pedantic. Um, I'm always interested in Opposing Force stuff, because I did love Opposing Force as much as I loved Half-Life. And if you didn't, then you're wrong. But um, keep an eye out for this one. It's, it looks like it's going to be quite fun. In fact, I probably should start tracking that. There we go. All right, so Valentine's Day update. Now, raising the bar is another beta thing, and let's be honest, there's more beta things than anything at the moment. Anyway, so what they're doing is they're not just trying to make a collection of maps, which is good, because there are some beta packs out there that are just maps. They're actually trying to recreate the story, so I kind of suppose it's like the opposite of the Schwarz Nibel. Um Anyway, these pictures look pretty cool. I mean, you can't, you know, that's, I mean, it's got that feel about it, you know, dirty, dark. It's not supposed to be bright and, and shiny. So if this is interest to, of, is, wah, if this is of interest to you, then, uh, you should be tracking too, right? Um, yeah, I'm tracking. So anyway, so there we go. Look, basically there's the two logged in read. Um, they're, they're doing the right thing. And what they're doing is, they are building the maps, making sure that the gameplay is good, making sure that the flow works, and then they're going to make them pretty, which is what everybody should be doing. All right, here we go, genetic variation. So this is another new one for me. Basically, you play as a combine modified head crab, which kind of sounds cool, although walking around as a head crab would be like really slow, so I'm not really sure what's going on. And then right at the bottom, they've got this little section about how they're thinking about almost randomly spawning a new type of combine sniper which is kind of fun and as you get closer to it it moves back or if you can get close then you can kill it but my only question is here is how is a head crab going to kill a sniper i mean if a sniper's like you know high on a tower i mean you're in big trouble you've got to have like steroid legs there um and in addition um that's it. Yeah, no, no other in addition. But one thing I want to remind you about is something that, um, I'm sorry, that should have been open already. Uh, this, this was something that was made years ago. Basically, Model for the Masses was a website where, um, uh, Black, Black Stormy was basically building models for people. You pay him some money, but he'd build you some models. And his models were great. And as a kind of a treat, I got him to, you know, build this idea. I suggested this, and he built it, and you can download it still. Um, I think I'll double check and if not I'll make sure the files are available and then you can put them into your maps and to be honest I'm gonna see if I can get that working and put it in all into my maps so there's that's what a combined head crab could look like so anyway there we go it's called genetic variation and basically the combine have been mucking about and they somehow made head crabs sentient and you're one of them and you kind of want to get your, get your own back as it were all right, so here we go, Operation Black Thunder, another Zeke Shadow, another remod. Um, so people obviously like these kind of things. He's talking about, you know, these images here about updating the quality of the uh, images. And I think that, the, I mean, these look really, really good. Really impressed with that. So there we go. If I remember, Operation Black Thunder was quite long, so having to replay it, mm, I'm not sure I'd do that. But if you haven't already played it, then it's a fast, fantastic thing. Here we go. What um, what the head crab would be without another update from Mr. Nikolai. So basically, he seems to be doing like twenty different things. So here he's talking about updating uh, Half Life Blue Shift to Source, and here you can. In fact, I'll, I won't play that. I don't know how that's going to work on the video. Um, anyway, so 
uh, you can basically watch him, him, I suppose him, playing through some of the levels in Source. He's working hard, but I don't know, why not just make new stuff? All right, here we go. This was the pick of the week. This is the Half-Life update mod, and it's uh, got the video in the post. So if you're listening to this head, uh, head, if you're listening to this podcast, sorry, you can um, go to the post and you can play the video, and it's pretty cool. And it shows all of the different things. It's got like a list of updates, and one of the things they're asking for is they want some feedback because when you're doing these kind of mods, you can actually make it do whatever you want, uh, but they want the community to uh, you know help. So basically, who should be able to hold some of the new weapons, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, check it out. I've, when you watch the video, it's not that long and it's pretty interesting. I'm, you know, I'm quite happy with that. Keeping on eye on them. Yes, I'm tracking them. Good. All right, next one is Lost Story: The Last Days of Earth. Um, I've been following this, and this is by Rock Path Collective, and they've got this question, and I've rephrased the question for them. <laughs> I've rephrased it to, "What have a foggy day and 15?" I don't know what SM means. 15 millimeters? I don't know. 15 millimeter wood screw have in common. And if you know, then you'll know what the next topic is of their dev blog. And we don't really have any good answers. Um, so anyway, maybe you're the, the intelligent one among the listeners and you know the answer. So that's it from the mod related, actually the, the main mods, which is like two weeks worth of updates on ModDB. But there's a couple of things I want to talk about that's not directly mod related. And the first one was, uh, this. This is a group called Freedom for Gamers. I found this from following a link on one of the, um, comments on Run Think Shoot Live. And basically, as it says here, that they're a non-profit single player game development organization. Woohoo! Single player. Uh, so I've never heard of them. Um, sorry about that, chats. And it looks interesting. Now, if you go to the main page, you've got this above the catacombs. And basically, it looks like that they're working on a mod. And it looks quite interesting. So you can follow it here. Um, nothing seems to be, there's no link to mod DB or anything. So I'm going to be in touch with these guys or gals and start to, you know, try and get involved and see if I can help promote it in any way, especially because they're, you know, all about single player. Good. And the next one on the list is Game Developers Tell Us How They Would Make Half-Life 3. This is a PC Gamer article, and there's a few different people. John Gibson, uh, Cliff Belensky, who made Unreal, so he's kind of a hero of mine. Uh, Kain Kainan Pearson, and uh, I'll be honest, I haven't read it. Um, but you might, perhaps, could be, maybe, possibly be interested in Half-Life 3. I don't know, maybe. A lot of people are, for some strange reason. So this might be a read that you're interested in. And finally, or well, kind of finally, is this. This is a YouTube channel called Game Grave. Now, this is mostly about Quake. I think he maybe does a little bit of Doomy type stuff as well, and perhaps some other games. And it's not related to, you know, single player Half Life modding, but there seems to be so many YouTube channels that have got like thousands and thousands of subscribers. Um, and there's other channels with, you know, videos with hundreds of thousands of views. And I'll be honest, they're, they're pretty average. But when I come across, um, a channel that's really interesting, you know, I, I feel that, you know, we should sort of help each other. And this is one. This guy's got a really nice manner. He His voice is interesting. And that's important. If you're listening to somebody who has a horrible voice, um, probably like me now, <clears throat> excuse me, then it's not much fun to watch. But he's got an, a nice voice. He's got some interesting com, uh, commentary. His videos don't have as many plays as they should. I mean, look at this, 33. You, I haven't seen this particular one, but I've watched a few others. And they deserve much more coverage. So, you know, uh, if you're interested in other channels, go check this guy out because he seems to have some really good stuff and he's well organized and, you know, he deserves more coverage for sure. Uh, so that's pretty much it, except to say that if there are other Half-Life related YouTube channels that you know about, sorry about that extra capital, I'll change that, um, then please tell me because I'd like to work more with some of these YouTubers um, and promote little known channels and maybe get more people streaming on my uh, my Twitch channel as well. So if you know anybody, please uh, let me know. But in this case specifically, Half-Life people. And then finally, finally, have I missed anything? Basically, when I do the uh, initial search for all of the news, what I do is I go to ModDB and I just scroll through the articles and I look for the Half-Life or the um, source icon. 
but I know that some mods have got their own icons and that I might miss one and, and I don't really want to, to miss anything so if you know of any mods that I'm not talking about on what the head crab please let me know and I'll start to follow them um, because that's really quite important and hopefully from this point forward I'll be back into my every two weeks schedule um, because Christmas and January was just like a disaster for me and finally 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 like the third finally if you like what I'm doing please help me create more and better content by supporting me on Patreon so there's me that's my face sorry about that um, and you can learn what you get and what happens and I'm almost up to a hundred dollars a month <laughs> for me to kind of go part-time I'd need 300 um, but any amount you can support will hopefully give me more time and um, motivation to create more content so that's it for this episode of what the head crab thank you for listening you might have thought that some of this was a bit strange because that's actually because i've been recording it on the video as well and i'm going to try to uh, make a video at the same time so remember finishing half-life is just the beginning see ya